Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to this third uh, public demo of Grunt. Uh, I'm Alexander Host. I'm one of the uh, co-founders of Grunt, and I, uh, I'm uh, mostly involved with the commercial teams here at Grunt, but I've also been a developer of the software for, for many years. Um, today, we are going to start digging in slightly more deeply um, into how Grunt works. In the previous two webinars, we've looked at the Visual Grid. Uh, we've looked at uh, the charting system. Um, and today we're going to look at how Grunt solves some of the many common problems that pe people face when they're making slides uh, and trying to do so in a scalable way. Um, so Grunt was was built originally to, towards um, you know, um, business consultants and people who work in finance that make a lot of, of um, uh, slides that involve tons of data, uh, lots of updates and changes. Uh, and so we tried to gear it towards the use cases that we'd encountered ourselves when we when we worked in in those industries. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hop forward here um, and um, just show you some of the some of the deeper functionalities. Um, so this is the uh, the team behind uh, Grunt. Um, we've we've worked uh, with these kinds of problems that Grunt solves for many many years, and uh, we we made Grunt to solve those issues that we'd encountered uh, over the years. Uh, this demo is primarily for people who are new to Grunt or novice users, um, and you might also find some some uh, interesting things you may, maybe didn't know if you're an intermediate users intermediate user. Um, Grunt does several things exceptionally well. Two of them are uh, the Visual Grid and our charting system. Uh, the Visual Grid is quite specialized, and I'm going to dig a little bit more deeply into that. But a fundamental uh, idea behind Grunt is that everything that that drives the visualizations comes from data, and so it's a very important part of how Grunt functions. Uh, and, and you'll see how data drives all the the visualizations throughout Grunt. Um, this is the Grunt tab. We're going to have a look at that today, uh, but I'm going to hop out of it and jump straight into into our demo. So um, PowerPoint has a couple of problems. Um, one of them is memory. And that's essentially remembering what you what you already did. Now, the way PowerPoint does this is through functions like alignment and stuff like that. So you can move things around and you can align things, but PowerPoint doesn't really know what that means in some sense. Uh, so I can align things, but I can still grab onto things and, and move them around. So these shapes don't really know about each other. And that's a fundamental problem in the sense that once you have a lot of shapes, it's very hard to get things to uh, stay in place or be in the position that you want them to, either relative to the slide or relative to each other shape. And so this lack of awareness and, and memory about what you've already done is a fundamental flaw in the way PowerPoint thinks about the relationships between things. Um, the second issue it has is, is affinity. Um, and affinity can mean many things, but the way we tend to think about it is the relationships between the objects um, and re also relationships between objects and data. Um, and so these shapes that you see here have no real relationship to each other other than the fact that I've grouped them. But groups are useful sometimes, but they're not really useful when you want these shapes to um, move relative to each other or um, to behave in certain ways with respect to other things that's going on on the slides. So it's a very, very primitive way of creating relationships between objects. Secondly, the shapes don't really know that they contain data and the data doesn't know that it's inside a shape. And so you have this complete disconnect between uh, what is inside the shape uh, and what the shape looks like or does or how it moves or where it places itself. And so these are some very fundamental flaws in the whole paradigm that PowerPoint is built on that we try to solve. Um, and the result of that was something called the Visual Grid, which was introduced uh, a couple of webinars ago that I'm going to dig a little bit more deeply into today. So um, I'm going to move into, uh, into an example here. This is a, uh, is a, a uh, Visual Grid. And when I select it, you'll see that it sort of looks like Excel a little bit. Um, it has columns. It has rows, and it has cells that you can enter data into. And so very similar to Excel in some sense. But obviously, you can see there, there are visualizations inside each of these cells that uh, you know, are not so easily achievable in Excel. And of course, we're now inside PowerPoint. 
But what Grunt does with this visual grid is to make the relationship between what you've already done and the relationship between the objects and the data very, very explicit. So uh, the relationship between, say, these these Harvey balls that I've placed here in, in, um, inside the visualization is very, very clear. They belong to specific cells. And that's hugely advantageous because it means that you can move things around in a very natural way. And by natural, I mean that the relationships either vertically or horizontally is very, is very natural and intuitive. And so if you imagine something like this being built purely with shapes, which is how you would do it uh, in native PowerPoint, you would have each of these would be it would be text boxes. Each of these would be a shape. Each of these would be a line. Um, they're very, very difficult to rearrange or to align and to move around. And, and that that harkens back to my earlier point in that these relationships aren't really explicit in PowerPoint. They're they're sort of there in the sense that you've aligned them. But once you want to do anything with it, you're stuck aligning and resizing and repositioning again. And so you can imagine if if this were, were just you know a bunch of shapes and I wanted to insert another product here, uh, then I would have to kind of squeeze things together a little bit. I'd have to resize my Harvey balls, move a whole bunch of shapes around to try to make everything look nice again. But by making this this relationship between rows and columns very, very explicit, you gain the advantage of things being able to resize itself automatically. And so one of the the design principles behind how Grunt works, uh, was to uh, it was for you, you as a user to never have to really think about alignment or resizing or repositioning ever again. So Grunt should just take care of that for you. Uh, and so there's some initial work up front and getting everything to look nice. But once that job is done, then you have the advantage of the structure being remembered by Grunt. And so if I want to insert another product here, I can do that quite explicitly by inserting a row. And when I insert a row, you can see what just happened is that the, the, the rows kind of squeeze together, everything resized, and that's essentially all you have to do. And this is Grunt remembering that, the, okay, these, these, these products have relationships to the Harvey balls, and the Harvey balls have relationships to each other vertically and on each feature. And so you get all this alignment and resizing and, and distribution for free. And now I can just proceed to adding another uh, product to my visual grid. Uh, and I can keep, you know, adding values to these uh, to these Harvey balls, and and you see the Harvey balls simply appear. So this is another advantage of of using Grunt in this way. So all the visualizations in Grunt have are, have a relationship to each other, but also have a relationship to something that tells it what to look like. And in this particular case, um, where I've applied Harvey balls, this is coming from a Harvey ball rule out here, which I can open. And when this is opened, uh, I get access to a menu that tells me what my entire visualization should look like in, in terms of the Hardy balls. So let me just pin that for a second. And as I add more values here, you can see that this thing up, updates. Um, so these Hardy balls are, are, are driven by the same rule, which is, is governed by this one. And here you can control things like the primary color, the secondary color, the number of sections within, uh, within each uh, visual grid. Um, or sorry, rather within each cell, um, you can control the layout. So whether or not you, you want to show just the Harvey ball, or maybe you want to show the number as well. Um, and, and other things like, you know, the size of it here, you can see that I've set the size of these Harvey balls to be 50% of the height of each row, but I can change that by changing that 60% to get more, um, harmonious, uh, design of, of my visual grid. And so I can control these shapes one place rather than having to control them by selecting each individual shape or selecting many of them and resizing them. So you can imagine if I wanted to do this resizing operation with, you know, in, in this particular case, um, you know, 24 individual Harvey balls, I would have to select all of them, kind of resize them in PowerPoint the way you would normally do this and try to move them back into place so they were they're centrally aligned um, under each feature and centrally aligned along each row. Uh, but because, because Grunt knows that they're they're supposed to be centralized in the cell, so to speak, um, I can just do this resizing operation and get everything else for free. And so this idea underlies essentially everything that you do in Grunt in that each thing that is within a cell has an affinity to that cell, but also to the column and row that it belongs to. And so I can control these things 
uh, very deeply from from um, um, from from this menu. Uh, and I see there's there's a couple of uh, questions popping in here related to this, so I'm going to answer it so uh, right away. So uh, it says there, can you quickly colorize certain Harvey balls rather than selecting each one individually? And the answer to that is is yes. Um, I can I can select a single range here and uh, apply an individual color to this this cell and then set it to be to apply to, to to the graphic inside the cell and you do that with a fill rule so I can I can search for a fill rule here and the first thing it'll do is essentially apply to the to the uh, to the cell and I can flip that over to the graphic and and it'll apply to the graphic instead and now I can control the graphic of the individual uh, Harvey ball. However, I think a better way to do this, or or a more, um, I would say, a, a, a way to do this that kind of belongs more to the design, is to say that there's a relationship between the color and uh, how filled up the the Harvey ball is. So perhaps what you want to do instead is to say that if the value perhaps is greater than some number, I want a different color. And I can do that in Grunt. So what I'm going to do here is, you see, I've now applied this fill rule to all the Harvey balls. And let's say I want to highlight a few of them. So I'm just going to select a different color. But I'm going to, I'm going to use actually a, a, um, a filter on this thing that lets me control. Um, oh, sorry. Apparently, we have, we have a hang here. There we go. So what I can do here is I can, I can use match numbers. And what I can do is I can tell this thing to uh, only apply to certain values. So let's say I want to do it when it's greater than two, perhaps. And so now what I've done is I've applied a rule that gives me a color for the Harvey balls when the value in the cell is greater than two by applying this match numbers uh, filter to the rule. And so now when I change the color, then you'll see it apply to only those cells. And indeed, when I change the value as well, you'll see the color changes. So this, this is a way where the rule applies to the value. And this is uh, go, goes back to what I said earlier about the relationship between the data uh, and the design in the sense that there's an affinity between the, the data and what things look like. So this is, I mean, most people are used to this from charts, uh, which works exactly like this. You change the value and then the chart changes. And this is just a generalization of that idea uh, into other kinds of visualizations. Um, there was also a question here, can I drag a row uh, into a different position? And, and yes, you can. So you can grab one of these and you just kind of pull it down and um, and the job is done. So again, uh, affinity between the everything that is in the row gives you all this repositioning for free, uh, which is, which is um, yeah, it's, a, it's an extremely useful feature. Uh, and very generalizable into other kinds of visualizations that that you can you can create using the visual grid. Um, and so so um, Grunt does this quite well on other things. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to let me just resize this so it's a little nicer. <clears throat> so you can see there's a bunch of logos here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this for now, and we're going to do it again. So because Grunt considers everything that is inside uh, of a cell something that can drive a visualization, that's not only true for values inside the cells, it's also true for text. And so one of Grunt's really cool features that I use a lot and would have been really helpful when I was um, working on this uh, professionally is that you can get logos really quickly. And the way Grunt does this is that you tell it what, what company you want a logo for, and Grunt will actually search online for, uh, for that logo. So the way to do it is to add a logo rule. I'm going to hit Control Enter on my keyboard to get the list of rules, and I'm going to ask for logos. <clears throat> and Grunt will suggest the rule that I want. I'm going to apply it, and then Grunt will search the cloud for these logos, and you can see it, it immediately found uh, the logos that I'm looking for. And this works for uh, everything essentially that you can find on Google or on Bing. It'll find these logos. And if you uh, if you don't find the logo you're looking for, you can also uh, save a logo locally on your computer and have that apply as well. Um, and you can also kind of look for other logos if you're unsatisfied with the ones you found. When you found uh, Grunt will you can change the search term here and, and have Grunt look for uh, look for other logos. <clears throat> um, and so uh, here you have this this uh, idea very clearly that that 
everything that has a value can can drive a visualization and it, it's very fundamental to how uh, how grunt visualizes really anything um, and this generalizability is very useful even for other kinds of visualizations so I'm going to show you one more example um, by going to grunt's template gallery so what you'll see here uh, is so grunt's template gallery is built in you add your own uh, templates if you want but these are the ones that we have built to get people off the ground uh, but here's another example where we've combined other, you can see several types of, of templates here that combine uh, various visual elements. And here's a common one. And this is a very typical use case that you see a lot uh, where people want to combine not only some kinds of, of visualizations that are you know different from charts, but actually combine that with other things such as charts. So here you have an example of that. And the way you would do this traditionally in PowerPoint is that you would um, you would you would superimpose a chart on top of your visualization like this and kind of try to adjust it to make it look nice. But in Grunt, these things are built directly into the cell. So here, uh, I've simply added a chart rule, um, in this case, a stack bar uh, to, to this particular column. And it's now built into uh, it built into the visual grid. So just as, as the question that was asked earlier, can I move this around? Yes, you can. You can drag this along wherever you want and, and the visualization will follow, including, uh, including the chart. And of course, I can then change the values directly in the cell and uh, the chart will, will update as well. <clears throat> um, uh, there was a question here if uh, you have to add the logo to the or logo to the table uh, or can you add a single logo to the top right corner of the slide as well yes you can uh, what I would do then is to insert a visual grid uh, just a single cell visual grid wherever I want it so you know top of the slide or whatever and write the name of the company in that the, that single cell visual grid and then add a logo rule and so you can get you can get um, a logo directly into the uh, into a single cell that would be essentially just getting the logo onto your slide. <clears throat> um, and so uh, these these visualizations, although uh, somewhat perhaps daunting and it looks a little complex to get the stuff in, it's actually very, 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 very simple. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how this works really quickly. Um, and perhaps do it by doing so, uh, I'm gonna do that this way. I'm gonna turn off all the rules to give you a sense of what this looks beneath. And here you can see it's a very, very simple, um, simple table, uh, but the number of rules applied here are actually quite few. Uh, and one of them is the stack bar rule that I can turn on again like this. And so adding a rule is really simple. You simply select the range or area or column or row or cell that you want to affect, uh, and then you add the rule and, and Grunt will, will, will do the same. Um, I see there's a question here, can you connect these tables to, to, to uh, Excel? And indeed you can. Um, so the way to do that is to look to the right here and you'll see there's um when this thing is not connected to excel you'll see kind of a, a see-through type of excel icon up here and you can see established excel connection uh, and when you when you do that um you will get this menu where you have two options either you can export the current data or you can replace the data that's already there now replacing data is very useful if you have a template that you want to reuse for something but you have new data for it so what you can do then is you can actually take something that looks like this and connect to a different region uh, in your Excel file and then use that data instead. Uh, I don't have a, an Excel file currently open, um, but once I open an Excel file, I can select one of them. Grunt will export that data into, into Excel. And once you have that, then you can change the values uh, in Excel and they will change also on your slide uh, when you pull that data in. So it's an extremely useful feature and we see a lot of our users do this for uh, things like financial tables, for their charts, obviously, um, for tables like like this that you just see right here, um, and for for a whole um, host of other other problems that they want to solve, where uh, they can have they can have their data living in Excel uh, and performing those updates uh, really on the fly in Excel, and then trust that uh, when they pull that into into Grunt, it'll update. Uh, completely and have the same data that they have in Excel. So it's an extremely useful feature to have, and uh, I highly recommend trying to connect your visual grids in addition to your charts to uh, Excel. It's a, and it's an extremely efficient way of, of updating things and, and pulling data in. Uh, and once you do do that, you can manage all your connections from, from this window up here where you can select individual objects to pull the data in, or you can um, 
you can update them all at once. Um, and so the way to do that is you click the connections, then you click update all, and Grunt will pull all all of your data into the into the presentation, and and you're done. Um, and so it's a it's a really quick action uh, to perform. And it's, it's it's also um, Grunt's read ability to read data quickly is is very very good. So you can read large amounts of data into your presentation really quickly, and you can do so um, essentially constantly, allowing you to kind of make a change in Excel, jump back into Grunt, pull everything in, and then do it again and again. So it's a it's a very useful feature, highly, and I highly recommend trying it. Um, I see we're uh, we're uh, 20 minutes into the webinar, so I'm going to see if there are any more questions here. All right. I see there are no further questions at this point. Um, I, I encourage you all to uh, explore um, uh, the template gallery. Uh, it's a nice way to get to know Grunt. Uh, and I would do that by opening the template gallery and selecting a, a very simple visual grid. So I recommend trying something like this one, which is just like a very, very, very simple one. Um, and it has just a, a few rules, just four rules. So each of them is, you know, here we have a fill, which gives it this alternating fill color in the rows. We have an icon conditional rule, which gives you different icons based off of the value, which, which is you can see is completely custom. Um, and then it has a size rule. It's not very interesting at this point. And just uh, um, uh, a rule that gives you these th the design for the upper row. Um, I see there's uh, one final question, so I'm going to take that, and then, then we'll end the webinar. Um, there's a question about what I think sets this apart from ThinkSell. Um, well, I could talk talk at length about that, uh, but one fundamental difference is uh, these visual grids, um, which are really geared towards use cases not relating to charts in many ways. Although, of course, because you can actually combine uh, visualizations with charts, you can actually solve your charting problems as well. But this this type of visualization, this this visual grid, is is not something you're going to find anywhere else. And I think it's a a key differentiating, a key differentiator. I would also say that um, another aspect of it is that Grunt is is uh, is built uh, on very modern modern principles of of design compared to ThinkSell, and, and it's um, it's substantially more modern. It's substantially faster. It's a lot more stable, um, and, um, and and just by virtue of being substantially newer, uh, it has some some ideas that that uh, when ThinkSell was was built twenty years ago. Um, perhaps are, isn't the way to, to do things anymore. Um, I'd also say that essentially most of the things that you can do in ThinkSell, you can do in Grunt as well through uh, our charting system. Um, there's also the availability of, availability of a Gantt diagram and an agenda. Um, and even more so, I, another thing that really sets us apart is that Grunt is under constant development. Um, we have a very active and, and engaged user base that uh, keeps pushing us to introduce new features, and, and we do so. Uh, very, very often. And so we release new versions of Grunt all the time. Um, and in each of those, you, you'll get uh, uh, to see features that have been uh, user requested or that, that we think are great ideas for, for the development of the product. And so Grunt is very much still under, under uh, development. Uh, and um, I think that's one of the things that's, that's um, fun about this as well, is if you encounter, um, encounter problems that you would like to see solved, um, there's a short distance between you and having those those problems solved because fundamentally what we're after is is making uh, solutions that that fix pe things for for people who work with PowerPoint in a very specific way, which is the way that consultants and um, people who work in finance uh, generally use PowerPoint for, which is a very advanced way of using it. And those are the use cases that we're most concerned with with solving. Um, so, well, I, uh, I think I'm going to stop there for today. Uh, I'll welcome you back for a for our next webinar. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this, and uh, I recommend you try this out at once. Um, you can download Grunt from grunt.pro slash download. Once you get in there, you can uh, just enter your email address. You'll get a free trial for a couple of weeks. Um, so if you'd like to try that, sure, just, just go ahead, and uh, we'll also probably reach out to you. Um, and and uh, you can have a more personalized demo if, if that's what you're interested in. So uh, thanks, and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.